This lab demonstration video is for Sally Ann von der Brink's Laboratory Experiments for Advanced Placement Chemistry Experiment Number 9, the determination of the molar mass of volatile liquids. This is pretty much everything you need. You're going to have your three large barrel pipettes. Make sure they're numbered, one, two, three. We took some latex tubing and cut a collar. I'll show you how that goes on later. Make sure you have a test tube clamp a weigh boat, and about 300 milliliters of water in your 400 milliliter beaker to start, and make sure it's deionized. We're gonna boil water in here all day, and uh, tap water boiling away will leave behind line scale. Make sure it's DI water or distilled water. The way that I do this lab, uh, I don't use the boiling stones and steps one through four have been done for you. So you're gonna to wanna to start on step five. Feel free to use the weigh boat to keep your pipettes from rolling away. So zero that guy, put your pipette on there and get masses for each of your pipettes individually. Check the data table in the lab and you'll see that there's a spot for that. I want you to make this data table in Excel as well. If your pipette isn't perfectly dry and clean on the inside, then you can go over to the acetone and put a little bit of acetone, suck a little bit of acetone up into your pipette, shake it around, the acetone and the water will mix, and when you squirt that out, the water will leave dissolved in the acetone. And it's one way to uh, dry, expedite the drying of your pipette. These are your three volatile liquids today, and I just want you to make a note that ETOH is the shorthand for ethanol and, of course, acetone, and isopropyl alcohol is your IPA. The instructions ask you to get two to three milliliters in your barrel pipette of your volatile liquid. And so volatility means that uh, the, these liquids have varying amounts of um, intermolecular forces that are much less than water. And so they evaporate really quickly. So as you'll notice, when you come up to these beakers in your source bottle, the beakers should all be empty. They should be color coded to match your bottle and your bottle's cap should be on. If not, empty everything back into the bottle, put the cap back on, and so that it doesn't get left to evaporate into the room. And then we'll be wasting it. As you come up, take the top off then, everything is empty. Pour a little bit into your beaker, and you want to fill your pipette just enough, oh, and it's nice and slow, so that you get about a pinky fingernails height at the bottom. I know that's really rough, but that's how we're gonna measure two to three milliliters. And if you get a little bit too much, you can squirt that back into the source bottle until you feel like you have about the height of your lunula here where your cuticle is to the end of your pinky. And that's good enough for today. When you're done at this station, like I just instructed you, pour everything back into the source bottle because it's so volatile, it'll evaporate so quickly, we don't want to waste any of it and put the top back on gracefully. You have two to three milliliters of your alcohol. This is ethanol in each of your pipettes and you've got your latex collar. And you need to make each one of these pipettes go into your collar. So. Look at your pipettes, the one with the weirdest, biggest tip. Put that one in first, it'll be easier that way, trust me. And then take your other pipettes, insert them as well. And the straightest one should go in last. Now you can see I've got two to three milliliters of the same volatile liquid in each of my pipettes, and they're collared. And you'll grab your test tube clamp to hold them all. Double check, make sure your test tube clamp isn't pinching any of the hoses. And you can do that once your test tube clamp is on. 
by squeezing each of your pipettes and making sure the air is flowing through easily. Now you're going to take your volatile liquid and put it into your beaker. And every few minutes or so, you're going to pull it out. Actually, keep an eye on that liquid. The, the liquid is going to start to boil off. The sweet spot, the perfect point to pull your pipettes out of here is when all of your liquid has evaporated. All the liquid, not in the beaker, but the liquid inside the pipettes. You want all of that liquid to be gas, but you don't want it to escape the pipette, right? So keep your eye on it, and the instant the, all the liquid, volatile liquid inside the pipettes goes to zero, you stop and you can turn your heat plate off. The purpose of the test tube clamp is to keep all of the pipettes down into the boiling water. What you'll notice is if you let it float up on top, then the, the liquid will get up into the neck, recondense, and then uh, some of that will come down. It'll, it'll eventually all boil off, but it'll slow the process down. So make sure you're keeping as much of the pipette down in the boiling water as possible if you want this to go quickly. My liquids uh, have all boiled off and when I pull this out I shouldn't see any liquids in here and because it's all gas and I did this the instant that the last little piece of liquid <laughs> the last little drop of piece of liquid what the last little drop of liquid evaporated and I'm going to take my paper towel and dry off my pipettes and Put these guys back on the scale once they're allowed to cool, all right? But to cool, you need to put them in some room temperature water. You guys are all going to have a second beaker that has room temperature water in it, and that's going to help to condense the gas that was left in your pipettes so you can find the mass of the liquids now. All right, that's actually what your paper towel is for. So once everything's cooled down, you can see in each of the test tubes, there is some condensed liquid and very, very, very little, but enough to mass on a scale that goes to the thousandths of a gram. Take your paper towel, dry these guys off, make sure they're as bone dry as possible on the outside, and then mass them again individually. Each of the pipettes are now out of the collar and they're completely dried off on the outside. You're going to find their new masses, which will be the mass of the pipette and the condensed volatile liquid. Now that condensed volatile liquid mass is the mass of the gas that occupied the volume of this pipette. So weigh each of these individually. They're each your three trials. You'll notice on your data table that they want you to do three trials. So you actually did one, tr all three at the same time, I guess is the best way to say it. Weigh these individually, get your masses of your liquids, and then move on to the next step. What would be best is if your cooling beaker, your condensing beaker, is filled with deionized water, because you want to get the ethyl alcohol and the acetone and the isopropyl alcohol out of your pipette. So you put some water in there, you shake it up, and then squirt this into the sink. And do that with all three of your pipettes until all the alcohol's out of them. Then, to find the uh, volume of this pipette, fill the whole thing with water. Use your deionized water so we don't leave any dissolved salts behind. And once you have your pipette completely filled with water, with as little air in it as possible, give it a mass and go with the 1.00 grams per milliliter density for water. All right, one technique is to push the air out of your pipette. Then right when it's just squirting water out, put the tip of the pipette into your water and then let go of the pipette. Now my pipette's full of water. Use your paper towel again to dry all the water off the outside. 
find the mass of this, subtract the mass of your dry empty pipette, and you've got the mass, which equals the volume of your water. Repeat all of those steps for all three of your pipettes, and then empty your water into the sink. Make sure all the water is out. If you feel like there's too much water left behind, then you can add some, at the end of the day, you can add some acetone to this. Shake it up, squirt that out, and it'll help to carry some of the water out of there. All right, your goal is to do three trials of each of the volatile liquids, and if your number starts to wipe off, just grab a Sharpie and write that back on there for next period. All right, good luck.